as we pray to Bhagwan to grant his divine message, I perceive him seated in the throne in an ochre robe, and I repeat as he speaks. Manam hitva priyo bhavati, krodam hitva nashochati, kamam hitva artavan bhavati, lobam hitva sukhi bhavati. It means, if one gives up ego, ahankara, he will become dear to everyone. If one gives up anger, he will never have to repent. The one who gives up desires, he truly becomes wealthy and satisfied. And the one who gives up greed becomes a happy person. Dear embodiments of love, students, boys and girls, teachers and devotees. Everyone born on this earth from a Chima that is an ant to Brahma, the creator himself, must engage in action. No one can choose not to act or do something while being on this plane on this planet which is karma bhumi or the land of action. However, what one attains in this life on this earth depends on what kind of action one performs. For when one cannot escape action, one cannot escape the results that are received or obtained out of such an action. It's the law of action and reaction which you study in physics that is the same law that applies in the field of metaphysics as well. When you sow a particular seed, you can only expect the fruits that belong to the tree that comes out of that seed. If you sow a lemon seed, you are obviously going to get a lemon tree and then lemon fruits. And if you sow a mango seed, the result will be a mango fruit. Likewise, whatever action we perform, we obtain results accordingly. The one who does good is bound to receive good results. The one who does bad is bound to suffer. One may wish that one need not receive the results of these actions, but unfortunately the law does not permit it and therefore one has to experience the consequences of one's action without escape. Therefore, Adi Shankaracharya said, Kuru Punya Mahoratram, keep doing good day and night without stopping. Yeah. An action which is pure in nature, which is selfless in nature, without contamination of anger, greed, desire or ego, truly gives us results of bliss and joy. So Swami keeps telling, do good, do good all the time, do good, see good, be good, this is the way to God. However, when we are doing good, at times we develop some kind of an ego that we are doing good. We look at others who are not doing good enough or enough good and then we tell that we are better than them because we are doing seva, we are doing good to others and therefore some kind of a indirect subtle ego grows within us. Let me tell you, this ego which comes out of this feeling that I am a good person and I am doing seva and I, because of me so many people are benefiting is far more dangerous than the ego that comes by material gains. Therefore it is not just enough if you do good action but it must be do, done with good intention. When we do engage in such actions of service we must not have any kind of ego. In fact service should cleanse us of all our ego, all our anger, desires, attachment, greed and all such negative feelings that should be the purpose of why we serve others. But if the service is leading to all kinds of ego, attachments and uh, authority and all the negativities that arise therefrom, then let me tell you that service is better not, be, not done at all. The more we serve, the more humble we must become, the more pure, the more loving and compassionate we must become. We should respect everyone, however small or big they might be. We might be serving as teachers, doctors, we might be serving as administrators, trustees, or we might just be serving as the gatekeeper or any other kind of staff, cook or a cleaner, yet we must respect everyone who is serving. This mutual respect is most important for a servant who is always humble because he has become purer 
by virtue of doing service. But if they develop horns that we are so and so, we are such and such people, we are such authority, we are so much of position or power because of what some things happen like this and the others who are part of it are anything lower and lesser than us, then such a service is only going to do more damage to your spiritual progress than help. What you do as service is not as important as what service does to you. Therefore, we must always be cautious. People will praise us that you are doing good service, you are thinking of others, you are better than other people who are selfish and only think about themselves. Let us be very careful of such adorations and adulations because that may come in the way of our spiritual progress and the very purpose of service might be defeated. And if you are a nameless, a positionless, authorityless volunteer, all the better it is because the least damage will be done to you because of anything that happens and any ego that comes in. But the moment we gain some position, some authority, some kind of a designation, let me tell you that is the biggest danger in the way of spirituality. It so happened that once Chanakya was walking on the street and without his noticing he stamped on a thorny bush and because it hurt his feet he was obviously upset. His Shishya, Chandragupta, was also there with him, who noticed that his feet were bleeding because of the thorns hurt. Chandragupta thought that he should immediately remove the plant by pulling it out from the roots and uh, destroying it so that it does not hurt his guru or anyone else. But the moment Chandragupta caught hold of the bush, it hurt his hand as well. So Chanakya said, you wait, let me do what is required. So what he did, he went home, made a syrup put sugar in the water, made a syrup and brought that syrup to the bush and poured it onto the bush. When he put that, Chandragupta was obviously surprised and he asked, why are you giving sweet juice to this bush which has hurt your feet? He said, you wait and watch for some time, you will know the reason. And in a few moments, a lot of ants started making their way to the bush and they started eating at the roots of the bush and thereby they destroyed the bush completely. And that's how the bush was destroyed without hurting or harming oneself. And then Hanakya told Chandragupta, when your enemies are disturbing you or destroying you, they are, they are hurting you, the best thing to do is to praise them more so that their egos will go up and they will damage themselves, they'll destroy themselves, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to go and fight a war, you don't have to raise, uh, raise your voice, you don't have to pull out a sword. Just by speaking like this and praising them for all their mistakes, which they should not realize, they will themselves destroy themselves. Likewise, if you get position, power, authority, all the more you should be careful because that can be a source of a reason for your own self-destruction if you cannot handle it right. The more people praise you for what you are doing, the more you should be careful. Oh, this is a nice sugar syrup being poured on me. Soon ego, anger, attachments, desires will come and destroy me. I rather be careful. Therefore, I am not praising you all of, all of you for all that you do because I know what you are doing is good. You also know what you are doing is good. By praising, I do not want to increase your ego or increase your feeling of doership and thereby cause ruin to you. But if you don't do good work, definitely I will come and scold you because that is also not right. Once a student was there, his parents were complaining to me that this student does not write any letter to us, Swami. Tell him to write letters to us, the parents. I told them, when he does not write letter to you, it means everything is going on fine. If he write letter only, you should be worried. Something must be wrong or he wants something from you. Likewise, I will not praise unnecessarily. If I don't praise, it means everything is going on fine. But if I scold, it means you are not doing your work properly. So all of you should be very careful when you are treading this path of service. It's a double-edged sword. It can do good to others, but it can do damage to you in the process if you do not know how to handle the praise, how to handle this feeling of having done good to others. The more you do seva, it sh you should become more humble, you should become more nameless, more positionless, you should not have any attachment to any authority, then this seva is really doing good to you as well, you to the you others. Do. I am very happy that you are all taking efforts to go out to these villages, look after the pregnant women and also the newborn babies for they all need our help but truly you are not doing any seva it is not a seva that you are doing to somebody when we think all are ours in everyone our Swami only resides God only resides where is the question of doing any help to anyone you are only helping yourself with that feeling the feeling of a family we must undertake such service the hand does not thank the mouth mouth does not thank the hand 
nor the stomach thanks the mouth or mouth thanks the stomach because they are all part of the same body and it is only a mutual love and understanding which makes all these limbs of the body work for each other likewise all of us are a part of the same society like the limbs of this society and all belong to each other therefore doing any help to anybody does not really demand praise or uh, adulation or adoration it is a natural process of doing things for each other because we are all part of each other but yes if we don't do that then you must be reminded reprimanded because what is natural to you what you are supposed to do if you do not do definitely you need a reminder for me nobody is small nobody is big for me all are my own whether he is a watchman at the gate whether he is a trustee of the trust whether he is an administrator of a campus or whether he is a cook or a cleaner to me all are limbs of the same society all are limbs of the same organization and therefore every part must deserve the respect love and care that is due to them feet also belong to the body hands also belong to the same body stomach also belongs to the same body so does the face therefore it is only the matter of position and functionality but they are all limbs of the same body and therefore they are all equal in my eyes in fact you should judge the character of a person not by looking at how he behaves with his seniors or superiors but how he behaves with his juniors and subordinates it is no normal and natural for anybody to respect the superior person or the person with greater authority but a good person a person of character will also respect and love and care for those who are junior or subordinates to them i am happy that all the staff are happily happily settled in the new quarters and they are finding it comfortable and convenient i'll definitely visit it when i come that side for other uh, programs i will definitely visit all your quarters and i convey my blessings keep it well keep it as a prasadam of god and uh, be happy live happily there with these words of blessings i conclude today's talk you should not doctor. think that you are just a cook or you are a gatekeeper or you are a gardener or you are a cleaner or you are a washerman all this is the way you think of it but how i think all this is helping our children to study to get educated so therefore you are also contributors to this education of that child to the building of this nation and therefore you must consider your job as with great pride and honor and the teachers and principals and wardens and all those who are actually directly involved in the education and upbringing of the children must be very respectful for them for just tell me if one day the washerman doesn't wash the clothes of the students or the cook does not cook the food what, will you be able to teach that child that child in your class if the classrooms are not clean if the campus is dirty if electricity is not there if water system is not working all these become obstacles in you as teachers conducting your duties therefore you must be respectful to them you must also acknowledge their efforts and be grateful to their service in our culture we call it karmane namaha we worship we, we bow down to work work itself is our worship that is the culture that we belong to and therefore we must truly imbibe this culture and accordingly pay our respects and gratitude to everyone who makes our lives easy comfortable here because of which we are able to go about doing our daily activities. Thank you.